I already have welcome cut out on here and all I'm gonna do is weed out my words. And I have a couple of the Cricut tools that came with my Cricut machine. I don't use them very often. Um, I like working just with this little thumbtack. Uh, I don't know, that's what works for me. I just like it, I guess, because it gets me closer to the stencil, so it's just easier for me. But some people like to go to Harbor Freight and get the cheap dental tools as well for a couple bucks, um, but you definitely don't need the expensive Cricut tools. There's other options that work just as well. So all I'm doing is weeding out the letters where I'm going to want my black paint to go once I apply this stencil to the sign. So once you have your stencil weeded, the next step would be to apply the transfer tape. This stuff you can use over and over again to, um, gosh, I don't even know how many times, but a lot. So I usually just honestly hang it off of the working area that I'm working on when I'm done with it and I just keep reusing it until it seems to be not sticky anymore. So it's as simple as putting the contact paper on and then using a scraper. Again, Cricut sells tools. You could use a credit card. This I got for, I think, 10 cents from Walmart, and this is what I use. All you're trying to do is smooth out the bubbles and get the transfer tape applied to the stencil. turn it over. Also these mats come two in a package from Dollar Tree and they're really helpful to use just for a working area. So now I'm just going to peel this paper off and what I'm going to be left with is the stencil stuck to my transfer tape. And then I'm going to apply stencil to my sign. This isn't going to be perfect because this isn't an exact straight edge, but I can kind of eyeball and see the tops of these letters are just over two inches. I'm just kind of running it across. And that's about the best I'm going to be able to do since the board's not perfect. Um, so now that I know exactly where I want it, I'm going to take the scraper. And what I'm trying to do now is get the stencil to stick to the wood. to peel off the transfer tape. Sometimes it helps to kind of roll it back. This one's coming off pretty easily. on the side of my table for later. <laughs> um, so now that this is down, um, you have two options. Bec if I was making a white sign and this was painted just a normal white, which is what I typically do, I would um, 
go over the stencil with the same exact color paint as what my background wood is. And what that does is create a seal so that the stencil is sealed and when you go over it with your next color of paint, it will eliminate or minimize the amount of bleeding that you get. Because I cannot paint this white, because I obviously can't match what the background of this color distressed barn wood is, I'm going to use some Mod Podge. So I'm just going to grab a little bit. And all I'm going to do is just go over my stencil. And again, all I'm trying to do here is get the stencil to adhere to my wood so that when I come back over it with the black, this essentially creates a seal here between the, the vinyl and the wood so that when I come back with the black, I'll get a cleaner line, hopefully. That is the goal. Um, the other thing that helps with minimizing the bleeding is to just go really lightly with your color that you're stenciling with and go light and do multiple coats. So that's it. Um, so, you know, an extra minute in the total process, but it's uh, totally worth it because um, it will definitely help. So you can use, I like to use this makeup sponge. They have the bags of makeup sponges that you can get from any kind of beauty store that they sell for a dollar or two. I just happen to have this nicer brand sponge in bulk from a clearance shopping day. So I just use this. So you know, dab it in the paint and then kind of dab the paint off so that there's barely anything on here. It's not dripping, it's, it's very light. And you're just going to go over your stencil. So less is more. And you'll just go over this a couple times. I use a couple different brands of paint. I can't really say that I like one over the other. I just kind of get what's on sale. So this is Deco Art Americana in Ebony. Um, I have a bunch of the Waverly chalk paints. I do, I do like using those. And then for a lot of my signs, uh, for the base coat, I even just use leftover Sherwin-Williams paint that I had from when we did some shiplap around the house. Uh, that seems to work really well for me for a base. I also like the Rust-Oleum brand too, so I've kind of tried it all. Most of the signs that I make to sell, though, are with that Sherwin-Williams base coat and the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. So that's about three coats. I'm going to give it a minute to dry. Um, shouldn't have to wait too long, again, because you're doing such thin coats, it dries pretty quickly and you can pull your stencil off before it's completely dry as well. So I'll just give it a minute, come back over, um, already it's almost dry, I could probably start to peel it off. So this is the moment of truth. Uh, you're obviously hoping for no bleeds. <laughs> and I'm just gonna peel this off. Now I'm not sure because this is barn wood too, it's already obviously a little bit chippy. Hoping I won't lose too much of the background paint when I pull up on my stencil.
There's a little bit of bleeding there. I have to try and touch that up. Again, if you're new to making signs, starting off with a piece of wood that isn't smooth is going to be a little more difficult to work with than a smooth board because you don't get the nice seal as much as you would on a completely flat piece of wood. So I know a lot of people get frustrated and want to quit because of the bleeding in the beginning when they're trying to make their first signs and the wood you're using has a lot to do with it. So even this is taking me longer than it normally would because I'm trying to be careful. You can see some of the background wood is coming up with that because it's so distressed. Honestly, this is the first sign I've made on a piece of wood, a piece of barn wood. So you're witnessing my first experience with it as well. So that I have the majority of the stencil off and then I'm just going to come and take my little thumbtack here and get the rest off. Okay, so next I'm going to just um, tie the corn stalks together with this little piece of ribbon that I've already cut down from the Dollar Tree. So no real rhyme or reason to this other than I want the yellow one in the middle and maybe slightly higher. glue these down first and then I'll trim these. I just bought these Stanley cutters from Walmart. They were $10. Um, so far they've been working good on my other projects so hoping that it will be strong enough to cut through this wire. But we will see. the E6000 to attach these to the sign. Okay, so I let this dry overnight. Um, it took a little bit of finagling off camera to get this to stick down and I just um, kind of stuck my can of paint on there to hold it in place overnight and now it seems to be stuck really good. So I've fluffed up some of the leaves and now I'm just gonna trim the stems hopefully with my new clippers here. Um, trim them a little longer. Okay, so now I am going to wrap the bottom of the corn husk stems with a piece of ribbon to finish it off. So I'm just wrapping it around the bottom here and I'm gonna add a little bit of glue, hot glue, and get it started. And then I'll fold it over, uh, fold over the bottom so that the bottom edge is completely finished off and then just start wrapping the ribbon tightly around the corn husks. And 
I'll just add a little bit more glue as I go here to secure it. So for a finishing touch, I went back and added one more ribbon. I hope you guys like this easy DIY sign. I will put a link in the description if you would like to purchase the Welcome SVG, which was made with a Desire Pro font. 